the last drop Are you gonna blow your head off? Take good aim and don't forget to duck A light sucks every Monday And all the way to Sunday But I wouldn't have it any other way I don't care how you're doing What's up or how's it hanging? I'd like to buy this world one last drink And life sucks all of the time Stick it up your sunshine And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds Welcome to the crazy life, everybody. Um, extra welcome to any new people that are listening, and welcome back to those that have been our faithful follow- followers. Uh, we love you all. Um, and yeah, I suck at beginnings, just so you know, everybody. <laughs> if you haven't figured that already by listening to the podcast, beginnings and ends are not necessarily my forte. But <laughs> Irregardless, oh, to use a non-English oh, word, oh. <laughs> that was thrown in just for just for the reaction Brian gives. Um, <laughs> anywho, I'm Jen, of course, the hostess, and my co-host, as always, is Brian. Hey, Brian. Howdy. <laughs> now that I've given oh. you a headache. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a yeah. little bit of knowledge for you out there who. Uh, don't know Brian all that well. He has a thing for the English language and uh, using appropriate words, yes, as well as non-made up words. No, no. And... See, I, I, I'm fine with like stuff because you know me. I use a bunch of really weird terminologies at times that nobody right. use, or not nobody, but a lot of people don't use anymore. You know, mm-hmm. but it's the idea that a lot of times, like, I'm fine with it if I know that it's a you're using them as a kind of mm-hmm. lamp, you know, skewering mm-hmm. something else. But when it's like when you hear somebody say like supposedly and it just makes my skin crawl. And the and honestly the only reason is because when you say that stuff it makes you come across as ignorant. Like I just I'm not a person who I I try as hard as I can unless it's something I'm truly ignorant in. I try not to, you know, give <laughs> that vibe sound off. Ignorant. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I I kind of you know, I'll do that and I'll correct people as they do it and I know that makes me the elitist jerk but i don't care <laughs> and that's not a moot point yeah Ugh. like i can't even i shouldn't say mute this time yes that's um, not even a mute point yeah but it's like me you know like when i text someone i cannot use the like b then the number four for b4 i can't i cannot do that i can't use you are for your i cannot do that mm-hmm. and i just my thumbs go nope and fix it <laughs> <laughs> Your thumbs have better grammar than yes. most people. Yes. Oh, I just and it, it'll take me twice as long to type something out, but I just don't care. You know, <laughs> I mean, there's things I do that I shouldn't. Like I don't always punctuate and stuff like that. But I, right. oh, the other stuff just drives me crazy. So now everybody, as <laughs> yeah. your assignment for the week, <laughs> send Brian all of your misspelled words and abbreviations and yeah. Listen, I've been known to send people. Uh, clipping, not clippings, but like a copy and paste of a screenshot from like a dictionary. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, so. <laughs> and it was because when I grew up, you know, my mom was always the type that if you don't know a word, go get the dictionary and learn the word. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, you know, incorporate it into things you said. I was in spelling bees. I was, you know, mm-hmm. like it, it was just something that I, you know, I, I was not passionate about, but kind of passionate about, you know, it's just, mm. I oh, want... your mom was a word a day calendar. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, but <laughs> if I came to her and said, what does this mean? She would say, go look it up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I did. I mean, you, you've seen it. The one dictionary I had from when I was a kid, that thing is just, I didn't highlight or anything like that, but I mean, I would learn the word and learn, and then I would try to apply it to vocabulary i mean unless it was some ridiculous word you know right like anti-disestablishmentarianism yeah i mean a lot of words like that you don't get a good chance to uh you know stuff that one in there at the water cooler 
No, no. <laughs> they're not really banter about words. No. But, um, no, I grew up in a house where um, my father was an English major. His best friend is an English professor who teaches Shakespeare. And my brother has a, above a, average intelligence, to say the least. And and your uncle is and also an uncle. English. Yes, my uncle, my other my uncle is a um, is an English professor as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, and yet so, you still say espresso. And I still say espresso. But uh, yeah, the, no, I grew up I'm in a kidding. house where my dad and my brother would actually play Jeopardy. Not even like the pseudo play Jeopardy. Yeah. Like where you guess at the answers and sometimes you're right. Yeah. No, no, no. They both knew most of the answers yeah. and would compete to answer the, the answer. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was just, it was, yeah. Yeah, I get, in most, in most families, it's probably, like, a, you know, Wheel of Fortune yeah. is the other example of that. Yeah, That was exactly. always more my game. So, you know, because mm-hmm. it just, it shows, it, it's not just guessing a lot of times, it's it's knowing, you know, uh, letter placement and how, you know, sentences are structured and that kind of stuff. There, there's more to it than... It's why I get frustrated when I watch the show because at times I, I mean, I will yell at the TV when people don't pick the more popular letters first. Mm-hmm. It's like, why would you pick an F when S is available? <laughs> you know that kind of a thing. Right. <laughs> it's like S appears in the English language way more than F does. Anyway. It's like, come on, if you're playing the Hawaiian version, you don't go with the the consonants. <laughs> no you the vowels. Yeah. Jeez, good thing they don't charge you per on that one. Yeah, no kidding, right? Well, any anywho, um. We kind of went off on track, but yeah. you guys are all used to that by now. Mm-hmm. We go off on track, off track, all the time. <sighs> I can't talk tonight. Mm-hmm. And you can blame that uh, courtesy of Mike's Hard Lemonades. So <laughs> I am on my second, which is unusual for a work day for me. But uh, so, yeah, so if I get a little tongue tied or the brain's not working quite right, you know why. If you do want to actually see. Um, Jen being quite the drunk Jen, you could always check out. There's an old version of um, of a little punch drunk. Thank you, a yeah. little punch drunk that uh, Brian and I were on way back when, probably about two three years ago. Yeah. That I'm sure it's in the archives somewhere. If you really wanted to dig it out, yeah, I absolutely but... couldn't tell you what number that is. <laughs> I have no idea. You if... have to work hard at it. Yeah. And um, I, be- I believe at that time I was going under the the title dits so yeah you would have to look it up um little punch drunk with rambo and uh guest starring brian and the dits yep so anyhow a little plug for them guys Mm -hmm. um so how has your week been yeah it's not been a good week (laughs) i've had a pretty yeah i've had a pretty down week so Mm, sorry anything Uh, in particular uh, it's been a lot of stuff. I, you know, Saturday was, um, my family, my, my sister-in-law was having a, uh, 50th birthday party for my brother. And mm-hmm. I woke up at about, I don't remember if it was 10 or noon with the worst headache I've had. And I don't know how long and, and I mean, to the point that, I mean, I was almost in tears. It was so bad. And, you know, I took medicine. I put the cold compress on my head like I normally do. I'm in a dark room and just nothing was even remotely touching it. So I didn't end up going. And, you know, I'm sure Again. I'm sure yeah. a lot of bad things were said about me, but whatever. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, so it started with that. And then, it, you know, uh, I'll get into the other a little more because it kind of fits more with our mm-hmm. topic, but not yet. Um, just, I don't know, just this week, there's just, I don't, I've just, got, it, it just feels like a, a Charlie Brown week for me, you know, it just feels <laughs> right. like there's kind of a cloud just hanging over my head this week, you know, and mm. it's just, I don't know, it's just been a rough week, so. You know, and we all have those. I mean, sometimes you just, you feel, you just don't feel happy. Yeah. You know, and it just. So sometimes you can pinpoint it. Sometimes you can't. It just yeah. is. Yeah. Well, like this, I kind of can, but I also kind of can't. You know, yeah. it, it, it's kind of a mixture of it. I I think it's one of those things where, you know, sometimes something, nah, man, sometimes something bad kind of catches you 
when you're already not feeling great and it just you're like ah, and just yeah. that's, that you know that kind of a thing absolutely you know and that's completely fair i mean yeah. that i think that happens to all of us you know and it was i don't know i'm i'm still i'm having struggles right now at work dealing with frustrations and there's one person in particular that I I have very little tolerance. As much as I love to talk and I can appreciate people liking to talk, I have little tolerance when you're trying to deliver a message, when they're trying to talk with you, but yet they won't get to the point. <laughs> but yeah. you can see their point yeah. and you know what point they're going at. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you're just standing you know, there. You ever see the Chappelle show uh, sketch with the um, "Hurry it up" sign? Yeah, <laughs> like it's it's kind of that. Like you just want to pull that out and point at mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I mean, I, and he just has this way. He just rambles on and on and on. And at one point, like, it kind of came to twice. It's come to kind of. A you know, a, a head, shall we say. And this last time was Friday um, after work. He stopped me on my way out uh, to clock out and to have this conversation with me. And he just was not getting to the point. And what he was trying to tell me, I wasn't all that fond of. And he was just, it was just irritating, irritating, irritating. And I think, I think I even said, come on. <laughs> because you know you just get to that point in your head you're just like god come on yeah get to that point I, yeah you know? i fully yeah i fully understand i'm very you know? much this way yeah exactly and i just i was like ah you know i'm about to pull my hair out and scream at him and i don't he's a nice guy yeah and he's got good intentions and he's got good ideas well honestly that's what you, you ever notice that uh the people who tend to be this way tend to always be really nice, good intentions, and you're just like, just uh, enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's, you know. And, you know, it's, and it's one of those things that, as it ended up, so to kind of cut it, cut it short, we ended up almost having a fight <laughs> in, you know, in, in the middle of the room. Right. And because I was irritated <laughs> and frustrated, and he was irritated and frustrated. Yeah. So we were just feeding off of each other, and it just escalated. What you should have done was just walked over, clocked out, and been like, I'm not on the clock anymore and left. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's honestly, that's pretty much what my boss said. Yeah. So my boss, of course, come Monday, I get the call. I'm like, oh, okay, it's principal's office. No. Yeah. Not quite, because principal's office is technically HR. And I didn't go to the HR office. Yeah, that's I, true. You're right. Yeah. You know, but. Yeah. You went to like, you know, a counselor's office. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a couple counselor's yeah. office. Yeah. And she's, you know, talking with me and stuff. And they understand what my, my, the root cause of my frustration they get. Yeah. They understand why I'm frustrated. Um, so we go and we sit down. And, you know, we're talking and she's like, so I guess you said some things that were pretty heavy on Friday. And, of course, you know, the me, I'm thinking because my memory is is just not good. Yeah. So I'm doing the rewind. Going, again, by this point, I've completely gone past it and, and whatever, dealt yeah. with it and it's done. So in my head, I'm going, what did I say? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Because she's not going to tell me. I have to tell her. So now I have to guess. Yeah. Which part? Well, you don't have I to. Said. I mean, you could just go. I don't know. <laughs> right? It's like what? What did I actually like, say? Like, listen, lady, when I holla at suckers, I don't pay any attention to what I'm saying. <laughs> the words just kind of come out. Yeah. In, yeah. So you know, and then I kind of focus on a couple key points that I, I made very vocally. So I figured maybe these are probably what she's talking about. Yeah. So we kind of rehashed them, or whatever, and then. um and I said, you know, honestly, I'm I'm over it. It it was what it was. I'm past it. Yeah. I said, if he's not, that's perfectly fine. I, you know, I'm absolutely open to sitting down talking with him. If that's what he'd like to do, I'm come come you know come see me. I'm more than happy to sit down. We can talk it out, and you know, and do all that good corporate stuff. I said that's fine. Yeah. Um, if he's cool with just letting it go, I'm cool with that too. Uh, I'm 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 fine. And I said, honestly, all I want to do is I want to come in, I want to clock in, 
do my job, clock out and go home. Yeah. Well, you know, that sounds like you're just going to be doing the bare minimum. Like, no, that means I'm trying to be efficient. Like, this guy is taking an hour to tell me what he can tell me in five minutes. <laughs> the other 55 minutes, I could be doing work, but I can't because he's just rambling on. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, I had a flashback to Office Space, to which if <laughs> any of you have ever seen that movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For those of you who don't, you must. It is not... <laughs> I ab- not even an option. I absolutely had an office space moment, too. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, there is no option. Yeah. But in my head, all I could hear of is, are you really wearing enough flair? Yeah. You know, and that's, seriously, it almost like her mouth was forming those words. Yep. And she was looking at me, and I'm just like, oh, my God, we're having this conversation. And I, I almost, I almost looked back at her and said, well, how much flair do you think I should wear? Yeah. You know, and yeah. I'm like, no, me as a worker, I give you everything. When I'm on the clock, I give you everything I got. Yeah. I said, there is no stop for me. I just boom, 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 boom. I'll do whatever you need me to do. I will work my little heart out. But when I'm off the clock, I'm off the clock. Yeah. And I made a very firm statement. And those of you out there, and, and part of being bipolar and living with being bipolar for the years that I have – I know my limits. Yep. And I'm very well aware of, I have very firm limits when it comes to work and personal life. I can only work a certain number of hours in a week. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to me, it's usually around the 50 mark. Yeah. You know, 40 is optimal because we all have to have a paycheck. Mm-hmm. But I can give you some overtime. Yeah. You know, and still be okay. But any more than 50, it gets me off balance gets me extra sensitive because mm. I runs into my sleep. I don't get enough sleep. Right. I get more sensitive. And there's, and, just... and there's science behind this, not just with bipolar people. There's science yeah. behind that, you know, the more hours people work. I mean, it seems like duh, but, you know, it's uh, the more hours people work, mm-hmm. they tend to not be as productive because mm-hmm. they're tired. They're just worn out. They, you know, they start making mistakes. Then they've got to correct them. And really, you can almost get like a, uh, a perpetual motion kind of a thing going because mm-hmm. you could – you know, you could have to keep working overtime because you can't get the other work done because you've made mistakes. Now you have to correct it and do this other stuff. Now you have to stay over. You know what I mean? And so it's, yeah. Exactly. Like with this, if you're on your way to clocking out, he should have just let you clock out and save this for Monday. Yes. R- really, that's what should have happened. And it's, you know, you know in, because really in his... who, who hits up somebody at the end of the day for any sort of a potential mm. conflict? Mm. You know, it wasn't intended to be. Oh, OK. It was intended to be of, hey, this is what I'm thinking and we should do this and that and the other. Uh. And the, my response back, because I don't really want to go into too many specifics. Right. Obviously. Yeah. Because, you know, just for, for obvious reasons, yeah. as well as quite frankly, people, you'll probably be bored. Yeah. If you're not bored already, you would be bored. <laughs> it's normal work junk. Yeah. But, um, you know, he was he had some ideas of trying some different things which I'm fine with and I'm open to. My thing is, though, if you're going to bring something to me that you want to try differently, you need to at least gain my confidence that you know what I'm doing in the first place. Yeah. You know, don't bring something to me and say, hey, you need to do this differently when you don't even know what I'm doing in the first place. Yeah, it's... It's it's yeah, it's just part of the whole process, you know, mm-hmm. so it's like the whole he wasn't listening. I wasn't listening. And it yeah, it just yeah. got messy. But uh, yeah, so and then, the, you know, the the wonderful question of are you happy here yeah. came up, which is always a fun question. It's like, no, it's work. work. <laughs> yeah. And that's always a fun one at work, because what's the right answer to that if yeah. you're happy here? Because if you say no, then you know what? You're asking to be fired. Right. But if you say yes, then it's, well, you're not acting like it. Yeah. Yeah. Like you Brian see, over there is wearing 34 pieces of flair. Mm hmm. Yeah. What do you think is the appropriate amount of flair to, yeah. to, to dis- depict you? You know, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's all of that junk. It is. And, and I'm an HR major. So I yeah. understand blowing smoke in these questions. Right. You know, that's what I was trained in. Whereas, like, I'm I'm the type that, like, just sitting there asking me that goes, 
Like I almost like to me the counter almost is like, are you happy with my work? Because mm-hmm. if not, then why am I still here? That's like, all that matters is you're happy with me. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter if I'm happy here. All that matters is you are happy with my output. If, right. if you're not, why am I still employed? I mean, really, that's all it comes down to. Mm. Everything else is just bull, and it's time wasting, and it's all out of management books. Actually, I just had a conversation in a kick group that I'm in. One of the guys told me about how he has to now do a canned greeting when he answers the phone. Oh yeah, I have that too. And oh yeah, most corporations do. And we're like, uh, you know, and we were joking about, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, you just picture a place going, you know, we weren't going to go with them, but boy, that greeting, boy, howdy, that sure cinched it up for us. <laughs> you know, and one of the women in the group, she's like, I actually studied that in grad school. It makes a difference. I'm like, oh, I know it does. You know, mm-hmm. one, another woman in the group is like, I have a mirror by my desk so I can practice smiling. And I'm like, right, because you can hear a smile on the phone. And she's mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, you know that? I'm like, yeah, I've read the management books. Like, it's all fluff. It's all baloney. Don't get me wrong. It works, but it's such a waste of time. It comes down to the whole perception. I just want to be and... efficient. I want to go and do my work yeah. and just go home. If that means interacting with people, I'm fine with that as part of the job. But I just I want to do what I'm there. To, I'm getting paid to do. I don't want to stand there all day beating our gums over getting nothing done Mm because how long were you in this meeting well the the argument was about an hour and this meeting i had with my manager was a good 20 minutes okay was anything fully truly resolved at the end of the meeting no see what i mean Mm -mm. an hour and 20 minutes of essentially wasted time yeah you know other other than they they know that i'm seeking other employment elsewhere yeah but that's I won't, see, I won't quit, but, right, they, but they know I'm looking. But you get my point on it. It's like, mm-hmm. that's what this kind of stuff, that's why I don't like it. It's like, mm-hmm. I know people like me get, we get moved around a lot in places because we're antisocial or mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I question too much or what. It's like, I only do that stuff so I can understand the job better so I can do the job better. That's right. it. That is it. Other than mm-hmm. that, I'll shut my mouth and you won't even know I'm here. And I mean mm-hmm. that in the best possible way. You'll know because you'll see, hey, he's doing his job. That's exactly how you'll know I'm here, you know. And to me, that's a perfect employee. That's what they should want. Not, right. you know, it's like we don't have to have a jamboree at work. If that's what you want mm-hmm. to do, you're probably not going to be a successful business. I don't know. I, what do I know? I don't know. Well, and here's a treat for you folks. Are you, are you ready for this? Here, Here's my corporate voice. Thank you for calling X Company. My name is Jen. How may I help you today? <laughs> Yeah. There you go. Yep. Oh, and God. always end with the bye now. Mm-hmm. Ugh. You know, bye and now it just... sounds so condescending. Mm-hmm. It's so condescending. <laughs> it, yeah. It, it is. Like, bye now to me ranks right up there with, like, bless your heart. And mm-hmm. that kind of stuff, like it always, like whenever I've had it said to me, I always interpret it as, you know, the middle finger being flipped at me, basically. Because that's probably and... what it is most of the time. That's fine. <laughs> and that's the sweeter I get, Yeah. the more pissed I am. Yeah. Or the more irritated I yeah. am. And you can always tell. And when I'm talking with someone that I actually like, my voice gets uh, louder and more flirty. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah, and I, I hang up and everyone, you know, because I'm in a very small group, so we all hear each other and stuff, and we all have a good laugh because they can always tell there's um, actually two guys, both named John, that call in, and I'm a pretty big fan of both of theirs, and they can always tell when someone's, when John is on the phone because it usually, you know, my, thank you for calling. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, hey, John, yeah. how's it going? <laughs> well, you, I remember you used to say the same thing with me, like when I would answer my phone, like just from random people calling. Oh, you oh, could always God. tell who I, who I was talking to because I'd be like, hey, <laughs> or hey, what's up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or whatever. Oh, you got to give everybody your, oh. your professional greeting. Oh, God. Well, here's one I remember. I remember this is the most frustrating. This hit around the most frustrating time, I think, for me when I worked. I used to work for Hollywood Video. And I don't fear them anymore because they're out of business. But And there's no reason to anyway. They had a program, these coupons that you could buy. And I forgot how much it was. You know, it was something like you, if you bought like $25 worth of coupons, you got like $40 or something mm-hmm. like that in, in value, you know. And they actually sent us this thing. They're like, here's how we want you to answer the phone. It's like, 
Thank you for calling Hollywood Video. Uh, uh, let me start again. Thank you for calling Hollywood Video, where you can save blank uh, by purchasing real rewards. This is Brian. How can I help you? And I, we had to answer the phone like that every time it mm. rang. And first of all, the words real rewards, yeah, came out as real rewards most of the time from people. <laughs> And I, after a while, I'm like, you guys, like, who chose this for the name? Oh, well, we blah, blah, blah. I'm like, this is stupid. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say for most people on the phone because you're going to say wheel rewards. Because How about home with a big mouth burger. Yeah. You're like, what, what is said twice in the second word. And I'm not quoting mm -hmm. Jay-Z here, you know, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> can I get a what, what? It's like, ah, oh, it was so frustrating. But yeah, I used to have the ability I don't know that I still do, but I used to have the ability that I could be in a dead sleep. You could hand me a phone and be like, hey, this is professional, whatever you need to talk to. And I'd be like, this is Brian. How can I help you? Just like bang right into my <laughs> on voice, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, it was amazing. Watching go for nothing to high energy yeah. back to nothing. Yeah, because as soon as I'm done with it, I'm like, Ugh. And <laughs> 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 Like let the self-loathing, you know, kick in because, ugh. Right. Well, now that we've uh, bored, uh, bored everybody with work talk, I guess we should get to our topic today. Yeah. So um, our topic today kind of comes from some, some personal experiences as well as, you know, I think it's really important because we all deal with it on an everyday basis in various ways in stuff we don't see coming and stuff we do. It's wonderful rejection. Mm-hmm. Wah, wah. Yeah. And there's so, like you said, there's so many ways this hits us, mm -hmm. you know, in big ways such as, you know, uh, a job or getting rejected for a date or mm -hmm. marriage proposals or, you know, I mean, <laughs> right. <There's> personal, <laughs> yeah, professional, right. There's all sorts of different ways. I mean, there's, there's minor rejections and, you know, it's all the way to, like you said, there's like, you know, ones that you would see as like life altering rejections. And right. I mean, you know, you know, the one I had this week was, uh, you know, as I'm trying to get things kind of sorted in my life. And I, you know, for those who don't know, I, I was applying to see if I could get like, I'm basically on disability for a short time for the stuff that ails me kind of so that I could have a bit of an income so that I could, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, pay the stuff I need to pay and be able to maybe f really focus on getting my head right. And, you know, I got, I got turned down for it because <laughs> the letter actually says that I'm limited, but not limited. And I'm, I'm too limited to do the work I used to do, but not limited enough to do, to not do other work. It doesn't tell me what work I can do apparently. Cause I would love for them to then have suggestions and, you know, um, <laughs> Links. Places to apply. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fantastic. However, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, yeah, you know, and that kind of hit me pretty hard because I had kind of, I would felt different about it. I approached it in a way that, you know, as I, a couple weeks ago, you know, like I said, my win was that I stood up for myself and didn't stay quiet when I was in the interview and whatever mm -hmm. and, and different stuff. And then to kind of get this and go, wow it really didn't matter. You know, it, it just didn't matter. And I just, I don't understand how after talking with me, unless it's just from like a paperwork standpoint, I don't understand how they can say that I'm not affected enough, but whatever, that's not for me to decide here. So now, I mean, I texted Jen and I told her and I'm, and the thing I've texted, texted right after it, I believe was, I have no idea what I'm going to do now. Right. Because I know uh, I can't fathom a job or couldn't fathom any job that I can do where I'm going to be reliable. Like, as I, I know when my head's right, my work ethic is bar none. I'm right up there with anybody. You know, if, mm -hmm. like I said, I've I never, ever gotten any sort of grief from anybody over my work ethic. You know, I always volunteered for overtime. I picked up shifts. I used to unload trucks. Mm -hmm. Whatever needed to be done, I was your guy. You know, I was always that guy. And that's how I stayed at 40 hours a week the whole time I've ever been employed. Like, it was mm -hmm. rare that I dipped below 40, you know, because I was always that guy that, you know, there's always people who don't want to work the weekends. And I'm like, I'll take your shifts. 
holidays come, I'm working doubles on Christmas. No exaggerations, Mm -hmm. you know. (laughs) Right. I was always that guy, and now there's no way. I I just know that I couldn't do it. So it's kind of like, you know, and Jen mentioned some stuff to me, and, you know, I'm going to look into some things, and, but it, it's really difficult because I really and truly, even with that stuff, you know, that stuff's hard to find. Like some of that yes. work, work from home jobs are really hard to get because so many people, stay at home parents want those jobs. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it, it's going to be, and I don't, I seriously, I really don't know what I'm going to do aside from that. You know what I mean? There's other mm-hmm. options. I mean, you know, I, I could re-explore going to school and then trying something different or, you know, because what I have isn't going to get me a job, basically, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's it was really, it was mainly, it was really difficult because of, of you know, uh, of that. And like I kind of said earlier, it's like I'm already kind of run down from what depression has done to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So when you have depression, you're constantly down on yourself. So when something you get rejected, really, no matter how little the rejection is, it feels epic, you know? Absolutely. And I put some hope into this and it didn't work out and it sucks. And I've tried as hard as I could to be positive about things. I just all week have not been able to (laughs) and I'm not going to, it's fair. I'm not going to try and pretend like I can, you know, I'm not a person who's real good at putting positive spin on stuff. And this week's been difficult for me. So there's that. And we'll, and we'll see, I'll, I'll try to, you know, update as we go on and we'll see how this one turns, but this one, you know, this one stung. (laughs) And that's, I, I think with, with rejection, there's multiple sides to it um you know just like any any big emotion that that hits you know whether it's it's death or or you know happy things like you know engagements weddings and all that good stuff anything that causes that surge of emotion there's always an equal and opposite reaction Mm -hmm. so if you have a reaction there's the equal and opposite reaction that's what the laws of physics will tell us Exactly. And <laughs> yep. the laws of phys- physics also apply to emotion to a certain extent. Yeah. Uh, you know, but it's, it's, gosh. No, it's, no, folks, we're not going to get into string theory or anything like that. Here, no, so no, 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 no. No, I'm kidding. It, that's a so, totally different thing. That's quantum mechanics. Right. Anyway, you might yeah. hear a ladder theory or two out of us at some point on this show, but that's about as far as we go. And that's not really all that scientific. No. But, uh, I mean, if you don't know what the ladder theory is. Google, Google it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really, really funny. Yeah. But anyways, um, yeah, the thing with rejection, when it happens, you have to be able to dissect it a bit mm-hmm. because there's the emotional part, because whenever you put effort into anything, when you get rejected and it doesn't work out the way that you want it to, you have it's almost like a mourning. You have to kind of mourn those efforts that you put forth. Yeah. And you just get, you have to feel it and let yourself feel it. Yeah. The second aspect of it is perspective because you have to take a step back and say, okay, let's take a look at these things. Yeah. There's two things you need to learn. One, what could I have done differently so that next time I can learn. So it's always a good idea to to do a little self inspection just to say you know introspection and just say hey what could i could have maybe tried harder could i maybe have done this a little differently don't dwell on it though it's a big piece because you can get stuck there so yeah don't dwell on that yeah spend a little time you know maybe jot down a couple things like all right maybe next time if this comp- happens again this is i'll try these things that are a little bit different than i did before yeah the next aspect of it is depersonalize it yeah because you you take a little personal accountability for it and say, okay, this is some things I can do differently. Yeah. But then you have to take a step back and say, all right, kind of like what you did and say, you know what? I see maybe a couple things I can improve on. But for the most part, I know I did the best I could yeah. given the situation I was in and everything I had. Yeah, I think that's I what. Had, yeah, I, I think that's no what. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what made this one difficult. Is I, you know me well enough to know mm-hmm. I usually keep fairly good perspective on things Mm 
mm-hmm. you know, even with my depression and stuff, I'm usually pretty good about, I understand things could be worse. You know what I'm saying? Right. Kind of a person. And I kind of get that pretty well. And, and removing it from removing uh, or not making this personal kind of a thing. I think that's what made this difficult is that really it is personal because mm-hmm. it's all subjective because I can't go prove to them that I can't do this or that. You know, I can't prove to them that I lay in bed until I have to get up. And generally, again, you know, I'll just lay in bed. I can't get myself up out of bed, mm-hmm. you know, but I can't prove that stuff. Even when other people write a letter saying, hey, we've seen this firsthand, it's not enough. So it's tough to remove it from being personal, you know, and the perspective on it is, like I said, I kind of already saw it as almost rock bottom, you know, like I'm almost, I feel like I'm almost there. So when you look, you, when you have that perspective and and it is kind of personal, it's a really difficult, that's why I think I'm taking Mm -hmm. this. I've taken this fairly hard is because I can't use the normal. Cause you're right. Normally I would try to like, okay, Mm -hmm. let me take a minute, like take a step back and look at this a little differently. And, you know, and instead I I think with this one, I think I just, I think it's just going to be a punch in the junk. I just don't think there's a real good win out of this one. I mean, like you said, I, there's a couple things going forward, but I, I I don't see a good way that I can spin this too positively, at least not in the foreseeable future. Maybe down the road it is, but not right mm-hmm. now, you know. And that's fair, too. Yeah. But you really, you know, once you identify your, you identify your accountability, you try to depersonalize it as much as possible. And, you know, I think a really good thing, like what you said was, you know what, you couldn't control the decision. Yeah. You know, it it was something that was completely out of control. The stuff you could control, you know, you did whatever you could. Right. I will say that. Let me say this really quick. Mm -hmm. If anyone out there has depression, anxiety issues, and you are going to go through this process, Mm -hmm. it's at least the one I went through was mostly yes or no type questions. The problem with this whole process is yes or no does not work when everything in my world is gray. Right. You know, so yes or no is not an effective way for them to determine these things, but that's the way it is. So unless someone out there can become an advocate and get this changed, this is how it is. So if you're going to go into it, you know, there's your warning. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's fair when you're dealing with. With government, it's it's very hard. Yeah, it's no um, different than dealing with a corporation. You know, mm-hmm. it really isn't. But I think the other aspect of it is once you've kind of gotten perspective on it and said, okay, this is what I can take from it, what I can grow on, this is what I have to leave behind, mm-hmm. and then really stop and take take account of everything else. It's like, all right, so... Let's start at the ba- the basics here. You know, just like when you're having an anxiety attack, you have to start at the basics. Okay, I got to breathe. Okay, I'm breathing. All right, that's a good thing. My eyes are open. Okay, that's a good thing too. You know, I, I'm here. Yeah. I'm alive. All right, so we got that covered. And like, do I have food? Okay, I've got food. So we've got the basics. Got yeah. food, got water. All right, got a roof on my head. I'm okay there. And then slowly start building yourself back up. It's like, all right, so so this ain't so bad, you know. I I can I can sustain yeah. off of, of what I have going on here, and then you can start breaking out, you know, go into your Maslow's hierarchy. It's like, all right, so I got the basics covered. Yeah. So now, you know, I've got some friends. Okay, I've got some people who love me and care about me. Yeah. All right, so that that part's doing pretty good. So now, once I feel, once you get yourself feeling a little bit more comfortable that this emotionally has shaken your world Mm -hmm. and you get yourself a little bit more comfortable and re aware of your surroundings and really wake yourself up and go, okay, so these are the good things that I have going on here. Yeah. So now that I've got that, Mm -hmm. let's see what we can work on improving. Let's all right. Let's take like deep breath and figure out what steps can I take to start rebuilding where I was. Yeah. You know, and I think this it's it's tough. I yeah. actually watched just an amazing movie about um, something something kind not similar, but it was uh, a movie. And I'll look up the name before the show's ended so that I can let you guys know which movie it was. But it was a recent movie 
They actually won a lot of awards. And it's about a guy who has, um, who was undiagnosed bipolar and has a mental break. So he goes into a mental hospital. They, they legally um, put him in a mental hospital due to legality issues and stuff. Right. So he had to be there for eight months. Which means he was, he, a, comes... he was a danger to himself or society at that point then, I would assume. Right. Okay. Because yeah. I think that's the only way they can actually force mm-hmm. you force you into i mean unless you've committed a crime so, yeah. which he did okay so so yeah i mean i don't want to give too much away because it's yeah. you know a good movie but so you know he he gets put away into the mental hospital and he comes out the movie starts with him coming out of the mental hospital and trying to jump back into his life yeah and it's something that really resonated with me is the first few days was him kind of running around and seeing people like he goes back to his old job. Yeah. And of course he can't work there anymore because he was a teacher. Uh. And so he goes back to his old job and he sees the woman going in. It was like a Sunday and he sees a woman going in like the secretary or something. And she's, he's like, Hey, how's it going? You know, and see, I, you know, I'm doing great. I lost a bunch of weight and I'm just in a good spot and everything. And she was, a, she was scared of him. Yeah. And he was trying to convince her. He's like, no, listen to what I'm saying. I'm good now. Yeah. I'm fine now. Right. Everything's good now. Yeah. And But really be no different than someone who goes to jail. Yeah. You know, and they come out. And, like, let's say you know they went to jail for a felony of some mm-hmm. sort. Like, I don't know what. But, you know, a gun, uh, assault and, you know, something like that. And then they do mm-hmm. the same thing. You know, they come out and they're like, you know what? I, You know, they've done a bunch of introspective. They've got some therapy. They're in a good place you're still going to be terrified of them because you know what they did basically, or, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. And you know, and everyone was kind of walking around eggshells on him and stuff. He's like, no, 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 yeah. no, no, I'm good. I got my, my, my word that I used when I'm getting upset. Yeah. I've got my medicine. I'm, I'm doing good. Yeah. And, and he got so frustrated because everything that he tried to do, which was good, no one would let him and no one would listen to him. Yeah. Or believe him. So it was almost like he was he was constantly being shut down yeah. and put into that dark space right. over and over and over again. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I can totally see that with somebody coming back from, um, like, military service or, mm-hmm. or getting out of jail or, you know, just where the world keeps moving even though you're in a different segment of it or your part of the world mm-hmm. move, doesn't move the same speed. And then you're reintroduced to society and you have to catch up. You know, you're the car merging, you know, and yep. and yeah, it's tough to get up to appropriate speed to not inhibit the traffic. <laughs> it, and it is. And it's, yeah. it's well, like I, I said, I, with me, I, yeah. I used to work 40, 50, I mean, it, more hours than I could count basically. Well, not really, mm-hmm. but you know what I'm saying? I used to work a ton of hours and stuff. And now I don't even know. I don't even think I could keep a twenty-hour-a-week job. You know, I I would have yeah. such a hard time doing it. And it's that same kind of a thing. Is at this point I've been basically reduced down. That you know to build back up, and I don't mean because of this recent stuff. Just in general, the years of fighting this have just mm-hmm. worn me down so much that again, it's why I always advocate: go get help, go get help, go get help. Because I waited so long before I ever even talk to anybody and started learning about what was going on Mm -hmm. but you know that now to even do menial stuff like just something i know 100 percent. like there's no question i couldn't do you know again i Mm -hmm. you know the liquor store up the street was hiring they were looking for managers uh and someone to stock the like the beer cave basically i could do either job i really could i'm qualified to do either of those jobs and i was just the idea of it just there was just no way you just know, terrified you just mm-hmm. terrified me and i don't mean like in any sort of a sarcastic i don't want to deal with the public because you could stock mm-hmm. the beer cooler and never see anybody aside yeah. from co-workers but it's the idea that I, i'm just the the idea of of like i just know that i can't i can't go put in the days like i know i would call off and i and i think part of it in my head was that i was raised with that you don't half-ass something. Mm-hmm. You do it right or you don't do it, basically. And I think that has become a problem for me at this point. 
it's become a barrier. It has. Whereas for most people, that's a gr- I think that's a great way of doing things because I don't mm-hmm. like people who, you know, put in half efforts at work. It's going like you said earlier. If I'm mm-hmm. here, I'm putting in full effort. That's who I am as a person. Mm-hmm. The problem is that the being there, <laughs> you know. Right, and I think you would surprise yourself. I might. I don't know. But that's the thing. I I think you would surprise yourself at what you can do. <sighs> well, the problem, but it's it's jumping over. It's it's a lot like what you said when you uh, first were trying to get, you know, finally trying to go and get medicine and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's there. There's so much overwhelming fear and barriers that you have in front of you. Yeah. That. It's almost impossible for you. Yeah, I've put to take so. Steps. Yeah, I've put so much furniture and baggage in front of that door mm-hmm. that it's it's nigh impossible to open it without some help, basically. You know, and right, and you know, but that's where this other stuff. You know, like you said, with the some of the at home type jobs. You know, maybe maybe there's mm-hmm. something I can find or something that'll you know work to kind of get me feeling okay again with that. So where maybe if I put in 15 hours or 20 hours a week, I can go, okay, well I did this. So, you know, yeah. And then use those, yeah. um, those steps exactly. to kind of, to, to rebuild yourself. Yeah. Cause it's, I mean, it's tough and it's also very difficult having someone rely on you when you've purposely put yourself in a situation where no one does. Yeah. You know, part of the um, separation of from like b- mental illness, part of it is pulling yourself away from people and getting yourself in a position where no one relies on you for anything. Yeah. Well, because then you have the freedom of doing whatever yeah. you want to do. Because well, plus like no I was relying. Right. And I always told like I always told you, I don't generally ask things of people because I don't want them to ask things of me. Right. Like that way I can't disappoint people. That's kind of, that was kind of the mentality, Mm -hmm. even though it doesn't, you know, doesn't fully work that way, but it's, you know. No, it doesn't. Yeah. But it's just, again, it's, it's these things that come along with the whole mental illness thing. Yeah. Now, just uh, as a kind of a callback for everybody, the movie is called Silver Lining Playbook. Oh, right. Okay. Yes. I haven't watched it, but I know of the movie. Yeah. It has won many awards. Yeah. And. It is an amazing movie. Um, it's it's a perfect combination of it's it's not too dark, it's not too light. It mm-hmm. hits just the right marks, and it's not preachy. And there's a good amount of um, there's a bit of a love story in there. Yeah, but it's mostly about a man's journey to find his balance again after something completely knocks him off his balance. Right. You know, and I think that's it's just it's really poignant and it's really resonated a lot with me. Um, cause I could see that cause more often than like a lot of things with me have been, um, when I have my blowups, mm-hmm. you know, or I have a breakdown and it's just like that moment of time I lose my shit. And then I have to, I pretty much become that guy where I have to kind of run around and go, no, 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 that's not me. That's not me. That's not me. Yeah. Trust me. It's, it's my yep. bipolar. I just had my moment of, of, of silliness. I said, just, you know, forget that. Can we just take that 10 minutes and just like, bloop, and gone? Yeah. It's like, you know, remember all that great stuff I did before and all this amazing stuff I'm doing after? Do, can we just, you know, just forget that little breakdown, that little oops that I made? Yeah, I used to do the same thing because I, I would lose mm-hmm. lose my cool. And I'd yell at somebody, basically, like you know, mm-hmm. you get just get on the wrong side of me, and I just, I just snap, you know. Yep. And when I would do it, most of the time, it wasn't even that I was truly mad at the person. It's more that I'm just mad at the situation. Like somebody mm-hmm. wouldn't do something right, and I'd be furious, and I just get out of the way, kind of a thing. And it's mm-hmm. more that I'm mad that they weren't trained to do it right than I am right. that I'm mad at that person, and you know because. You know, a lot of times I was not the store manager. I was the, you know, key holder or like Mm -hmm. in the assistant position basically. So that, so I wasn't the one who actually trained the people. And then they worked with me mostly because I worked more than most people. So Mm -hmm. I'd have to deal with their, you know, and I'd be like, I'm going to train you right. (laughs) You know, (laughs) like you're going to do things the right way. Like, and, and that's what it turned out to be. And I always apologize and all that, but you're right. It's, I'd work, like I got this reputation of, you know, Brian doesn't like working with new people. And it was the mm. truth. I don't. 
because I want people who already know, I want you to walk in the door and know the job. I have no tolerance for no, for training, you know, like, but I, I, but I, but at the same time, I mean, I did, it's just most of the time when I'm working, I'm working. I'm, I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to fool around. I was really there to work, you know? And like I said earlier, I'm the type, I want to go in, I want to do my job. I want to go home. I don't, you Mm -hmm. know, we can socialize other times where I, I, you know, if there's time at work, but yeah. So it's just, um, you know, I think that's it's something that we can all kind of relate to having those moments where we just lose it for whatever reason. Oh yeah. Everybody and then trying to should, regain yeah. it. But I think it all comes down to the same thing. Like with, with rejection is takes to kind of even backtrack even further. Keep in mind, rejection is not necessarily always in the form of, uh, something big yeah it could just be somebody telling you yeah it could just well i mean or it could just be as simple as someone telling you no on hey do you want to go hang out friday Mm -hmm. nah you know i don't really feel like it hey do you want to play video games tonight nah i don't know you know it could be something that innocent but maybe you were just like i don't know really excited to play a new game with somebody or or, Mm -hmm. you know what i mean it could be just something like that just that seems inane but you're like you know you know. Or how, how about those moments when you're hanging out with a group of people and stuff, and there's a joke that everyone gets but you. <laughs> and no one will tell you the joke, yeah. 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 And all of a sudden, you know, it's not intentional. No one's trying to reject you. Right. But instantly, you've been rejected. Yeah. Members. Yeah. You feel like you're no longer allowed at the cool table. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, it can be something as simple as that. Mm-hmm. It's nonverbal, non-threatening. You know, just is. Yeah. Could be something as big as you ask someone to marry you and they say no. <laughs> yeah, that's... That's a huge one. Yeah. You know, something that you've put everything on the line for. Yeah. You know, and and it doesn't work. Well, yeah, because that is, you know, that's such a way of... I mean, you are completely laying yourself out there. You know what it reminds mm-hmm. me of is when we had Heno on here. Remember mm-hmm. when we talked about the um, the compliment thing? Yep. About how someone pays you a compliment, and that they are putting themselves out there. If you handle it badly, you've rejected them, you mm-hmm. know. And you again, you probably don't even realize it because you're just you, you, you and your baggage get in the way of seeing anything else. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Instead of oh, thank you, you know, whatever, or, you know, whatever. It's oh, this old thing, or nah, nah, you know, kind of an attitude. And they were just, you know. You never know. Maybe somebody's they're just taking that step out there, you know, or a, mm-hmm. a guy approaching a girl, you know, at a club, you know, any of that kind of stuff. Or a girl approaching a guy. I don't I don't even want to make it sound or a guy approaching a guy, a girl approaching mm-hmm. a girl, whatever, you know. It doesn't have to be romantic, it could just even be friendships. Yeah. We It always... could just be as simple as, you know, just going, Man, hey, I really like your shirt. And you actually mean as a guy looking at a girl's shirt that you really like her shirt. Uh Not that you're staring at her chest and, you know, and she could just kind of just look at you like you're a creep, you know? (laughs) Exactly. You know, because I've seen that happen. (laughs) Or my favorite, and and unfortunately I get this a lot because I can be a little bit of a ditz, the the mental pat on the head. (laughs) Yeah. You know, you, the people, they just give you that look. And you yeah. just know that in their head they're going, it's okay, sweetie. Yeah. Bless your heart. And, yeah. Yeah. Bless your heart. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and you're like, dang it. You know, yeah. and it just, but we, we experience rejections in so many different ways. Yeah. And we kind of touched on, and I, I know we're kind of all over the place with this episode, yeah. but then we kind of touched on the stages of of rejection that we kind of have to go through. But the big one to, you know, keep in mind, um, I think through all of these rejections is really keep in mind that you have power. When someone rejects you, and it sounds really, really weird because when someone rejects you, you are giving them all the power. Yeah. And they're saying no. Yeah. And they're throwing it back in your face. Right. Doesn't mean that you've lost your power. Right. Right. Because you still have a choice at what you do next. Well, it, you know what? This is going to be so nerdy. But, yep. okay, the game of magic, each thing that happens in magic is basically, it, For I'll explain it the way they explain it. It's like mm-hmm. stacking dishes, okay? Mm-hmm. So, and by magic, I mean magic the gathering, a card game. 
So if you cast a spell on somebody, that goes down as the first plate. If that person does something to respond to that, that goes as the second plate. And when there's a resolution to it, it's top plate down, basically. You know, mm. last one, first, in, you know. And it kind of works that way with these situations as well in that you go, will you marry me? Okay, you, you've put your sp- you know that spell out there. They say no, that's the response. At that point, everything's clear. You're back to no dishes in the sink, right? Mm-hmm. So what you do from that point on, you're starting a new stack of dishes. So like you said, you regain your control. As soon as they say no, you regain your control. Like even though mm-hmm. you've given them the ability to just crush you, you regain control all of the, that control, or you can regain all of that control. Let's word it that way. Because if you take it. If you take it, because you can just as easily allow that person to still be in your life and keep crushing you or whatever, you know. But you you can just as easily take that back and start a brand new stack of, of dishes. And, and by dishes, of course, I mean your response to things, you know. So let's go back to the wonderful ladder. So... You're climbing the ladder. You think you got everything good. You're making all the right steps. You're going great, and you hit the rung. And the the broken rung is the rung of rejection. Mm-hmm. So you're do 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 do, and you hit the broken rung, and you slide all the way back down <laughs> to the bottom of the ladder. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean all the way back. Right. Down you get sent back to go. Yeah. <laughs> you get sent back to go. Yeah. Shoots and ladders. You just you're bloop. Yep. You were absolutely at the bottom. And unfortunately, by the time you got to the top of the ladder and when you fell back down, there was a big mud puddle back there. Yep. So not only are you at the bottom rung, you're worse than the bottom rung because now... You're muddy you're also. Dirty. Yeah. You're muddy. <laughs> so what do you do? First thing you do, you make note to self. There's a broken rung. Yeah. You know, it's like, all right, so this is probably not going to be the best solution for me to climb this exact ladder again and hit that broken rung because right. we see what happens. Right. Unless you want the same results. Unless you want the same results. So you identify what went wrong yep. and what you can fix. <laughs> like I, right. would, I, I keep telling people that I, I have now, as I've gotten older, I identify, this is how I can tell you if you're smart or dumb. Okay. Mm-hmm. And smart or dumb comes down to this. If you like that, you climb the ladder and you fall because you hit a broken rung. And then you go, I'm going to climb that ladder to hell with that ladder or something. Mm-hmm. dumb okay if you cl- go i that's that's broken i need to find a different ladder smart it's like you burn yourself mm-hmm. do you do the exact same motion again if you do dumb if you don't smart <laughs> like it's right. that that's simple i think that's how i'm looking at life from now on you know yeah. dumb smart do you learn from a mistake if not dumb <laughs> i'm sorry right. i know it's it's oversimplifying but there it is well and the next thing you got to do So you identify that what happened, you know, it sucks. It hurts. Mm -hmm. All right. So everybody hurts. Michael Stipe told us that. Yeah. And you just, you you identify what went wrong. You fix what you can fix. Then you look around and you're like, all right, so this hurts. So you feel the emotions. So feel the emotions. Try take away whatever you can to fix the situation that you, whatever situation you're in, try Mm -hmm. to fix what you can. Take away what you can from it. Learn from it. Feel your emotions on it. Then look around you and start strategizing and figuring out how to rebuild. Yeah. You know, in the all three things. When you're figuring out how to rebuild, that is you taking your power back. Yep. Instantaneously right. taking your power back. Taking your power back can be something as simple as I promised myself, an example here, I promised myself a New Year's resolution that I was going to start talking to people at work where I was working and I was going to start telling people when I liked an article of clothing they were wearing. Mm -hmm. And I made this my personal goal. I'm like, regardless of anything, I am going to to help myself get over some of my social issues. If I like those shoes, I'm going to tell you. If I like that blouse, I'm going to tell you. I just... This is what I'm, I'm going to do. Something simple. It should make their day. If it doesn't, then, then they're odd people, but whatever. <laughs> you know, and I'm not taking any negativity from it. Some people 
I, you know, I'm like, hey, I love your shoes. Oh, thanks. It's great. You know, yeah. and we have a wonderful interaction. Some people, hey, it's a really great shirt. Wouldn't even say anything. Yeah. Wouldn't even look at me. Most people will at least look down at the shirt. Right. Because like, I don't what know. What shirt am I wearing? Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Like, I always love that. Like, oh, nice shirt. And he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this one. <laughs> but, you know, and I... Again, I put my power out there by saying, hey, great shirt. Yeah. They rejected me by not even responding. Right. Now the power's on my court. I have two things. Two things I can do. One, obsess about why they didn't say anything. Yeah. Maybe they didn't hear me. Maybe I should call. Maybe I should say it again. Yeah. Maybe I should do this. Maybe they don't like me. But, yeah. You know, a million and one things can go in my head. Or I can take my power back and say, hmm, guess they didn't hear me. And move on. Yeah. And that's that's a perfect example of taking your power back. Do not let, just because you have a rejection, do not let that stall you. Yeah. Don't let that stop you. Because, yeah, maybe that isn't the right road. So what? In the scheme of things in your life, like you've mentioned before, we are a speck on a speck, yeah. Yeah. on a speck, <laughs> yeah. flying through the atmosphere in the universe. Yeah. You know, this one little rejection, no matter how huge and life-changing this rejection happens to have been in your life, yeah. it means nothing when you take it and you compare it to the, hopefully for everybody, 90 plus years that we have here on this earth. Yeah. Maybe some people 60 plus, but you know, regardless, we're yeah. not going to focus on that. Aspect. Right. But take that, make sure you put it in perspective, take your power back from yeah. it and then start rebuilding. Yeah. You know, something we didn't mention a little bit too, and this goes back to a couple weeks or a few weeks ago too, mm -hmm. is this is where your support system is really important because absolutely not, not as much for the littler things in life, you know, the little rejections, mm -hmm. but especially for, you know, the bigger rejections. And, you know, I, I like, you know, I was watching a show uh, last night and the a guy, the girl breaks up with the guy. And uh, uh, when she does, you know, the guy's roommate comes home and he can tell the guy's in a bad way. And he goes, uh, you know, he's like, blah, blah, blah. What happened? And the guy goes, can we can we just not talk about it? You know, mm -hmm. I just need to not, you know, and then they end up uh, cooking together, like, because the one guy has no idea how to cook. So the other guy starts teaching him how to make a, a pasta sauce, like mm -hmm. a, a marinara sauce or whatever. And that's kind of what they did, you know, and it's like that was just as good probably for him as if they sat there and just fleshed out the whole thing again, you know, mm -hmm. like there's no reason to to dwell. Like you said earlier, that's kind of where the guy was at. He just, uh, you know. So, yep. you know, your support system, even if it's, you know, hey, let's, you know, let's, I don't know, go have a beer, let's go have dinner, whatever it is you need to do, you know, that if you've got that support system, that's why identifying people who are, who are willing to be that support system, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, when, when you realize that somebody is willing to stand by you, no matter what your mental illness is tries to to put in between the two of you or whatever when they're still willing to stand by you 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 know uh make sure you utilize them and you know like in mm -hmm. situations like this especially like i said especially for the big stuff the smaller stuff depends on what it is sometimes you just need to vent about the small stuff but you know i wouldn't go to <laughs> i wouldn't go to support systems over every little thing that bothers you you know cuz you'll probably mm -hmm. notice your support system getting smaller then. <laughs> <laughs> well and everything's built on choice yeah and that's the other big thing that you have to make sure that you keep in your mind every situation there is no situation and i challenge you Throw me any situation you could possibly think of, no matter how insane, on, on Twitter, toss them at me. I guarantee you there are at least two choices that you can make Yeah. in every situation. At least two. Probably a lot more. In fact, well, most of them have a lot and more. To generically put it, it's to do nothing or to do something. I mean, you always mm -hmm. have those two options. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. So worst case scenario, you always have those two options. Right. Because just like, you know, when you see on TV or something and someone will, you know, like, well, doing, you know, uh, or like, you know, how it always be quitting's not an option. Be like, yeah, actually it is. Mm-hmm. Quitting really is. Quitting's the easiest option, in fact. You know, it's. <laughs> may not be the most effective of yeah. being, you know, what you want. Right. But it's always an option. and Always an option. Yeah. So, yeah. You always have an option and again a form of taking back your power yeah. people in situations in life will constantly try to put you in spots where they say verbally and non-verbally there is no other choice yeah you have no options you have no choice here you must do this right no how often do you hear yourself or other people around you saying I have no choice. It's like, no, you yeah. always have and a choice. Really what you they're saying. like your choices. Yeah, that's really what them. they're saying is it's not, they're just not completing the sentence, but you're right. That's, yeah. that's really what they're saying is I have no choice that I find, uh, appealing. appealing. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. the stuck between a rock and a hard place concept. Yeah. Like there's and, options, but I don't like either yeah. of them. And when you're in those situations where you don't see any choices or any situation that's going to be a benefit for you, yeah. that's when you bring people in too. Yeah, you that's... know, rely on your on your peop- on yep. your uh, support system. Yep. You know, seek out other people. Say, look, this is the situation. Yeah. And, I'm seeing no options here well, for me. And again, well, a support system does not have to just be like family and friends. Support system can. And many times includes therapists or doctor or whatever, a, a professional. So don't don't forget that in the process as well, mm-hmm. that if you feel you don't have a support system, there's always potential for a support system. You know, there's mm-hmm. tons of people online that are, you know, that'll listen to people and, you mm-hmm. know, you can find online chats and stuff that that's what it's geared for. So, whoops. Or even blind Twitters, yeah. you know? Yeah. Shoot questions out to Twitter and yeah. just see who responds. Yeah. You know, sometimes. Well, like I said, I've, I've, I've had conversations with people on Twitter Mm -hmm. when they've just posted in a bad way right now, you know, need help or something like that. And Mm -hmm. I'll reach out to them, you know, just because I see it. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you just never know. You, you never know, but the, you know, uh, we should probably wrap it up. We're getting along here. The basic steps are the same. You know, we've kind of gone over them and stuff. Um, make sure you keep your power, give loan it to people. Take it back. Yeah. You know, don't let one thing destroy you yeah. because you are stronger and bigger than just that one thing. Right. Even though you don't feel like it. Yeah. Because gosh knows we don't feel like it sometimes. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> you know what sure. I mean? Yep. And um, one more thing about support. Make sure you have your support system around you and utilize it. Hmm. One more thing about support systems. They also come in four legs with fur. Just saying. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Yep. They are great listeners, yep. whether it's dog, well, cat, yeah. ferret, rabbit, whatever, yep. you there's, know, guinea pig. Well, there's a reason they're used for therapy. I mean, yep. you know, it's it's a legitimate thing here. They make you feel better. So mm-hmm. They're um, really great listeners. Yep. And they are great at helping you distract you from whatever's on your mind. Yeah. Just, you know? just only be careful. Like, if you have issues with feeding yourself, be careful of a pet. Yeah, make sure. <laughs> I'll say that <laughs> as a warning, but yeah. Make sure that you're at a place that you can take, take care, care of, of yeah. somebody else. Yeah. You know, because they do rely on you, or at least set up a situation where um, someone can help you take care of right. them. Right. Yeah. But, uh, or if but nothing yeah. else, just go spend some time at, uh, you know, like the pound or something occasionally and, or whatever. Go spend volunteer. some time. Volunteer. Yeah, uh, exactly. Volunteer. Go yep. for it. That's what I was meaning. Yeah. Yep. So. Yep. Everybody needs petting and walked and all that other good jazz. Yep. So, anyways, you're right. We should probably wrap this up. Yep. But if you would like to continue the conversation with me, you can always reach me on Twitter at Jen's Crazy Life. Um, like I said, I don't post all that often. I am trying to post more. Um, if you had been following my posts at all, you saw last weekend um, I ate a pizza roll and burned my chin. So, yeah. Fun stuff like that that happens in my life I'm posting about. And if you want to just talk or whatever, hit me up on there. Love to talk to you. Love to hear from you. And you can always shoot us an email at thecrazylifepodcast at outlook.com. 
or through our website at the crazy life podcast dot weebly dot com. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yep. Sorry, folks. The mics are hitting me. <laughs> um, with that, Brian, if they want to talk with you, how can they reach you? Uh, you can reach the show. Uh, if you want to shoot the show, a uh, tweet, uh, you can find us at the crazy life pod on Twitter. Um, I can be found at Stunami on Twitter. I can also be found at salty underscore language uh, from my other sh- uh, podcast, Salty Language. And that show's website is saltylanguage.com if you want to find all the links to anything you need from that show. Mm-hmm. So, And also, uh, our intro music was done by our pal Heno. You can find him on Twitter at Ida Heno. And uh, he's got, uh, if, you, you know, if you need... Uh, like podcast music or anything like that, like intros or whatever. He's been doing a a good amount of them over on, uh, he's got some posted over on SoundCloud. I believe it's monkey tongue productions is what he's under. If you need a link to that, hit, hit me up or reach out to him. And, you know, I'm sure I'd be more than happy to talk with you also. Um, as I say, Oh, you know what we didn't do? Uh, do you have a, do you have a win for the week? I, the win for the week for me is getting up, every morning getting my butt out of bed and going to work because it's it's been tough it's been tough to do that yeah and i took a weekend off i took saturday and sunday i left the house once to go down to the gas station to pick up a couple things and come right home yeah so i had i i opted out this weekend from (laughs) from society right and that's enough wallow time that i'm allowing myself fair enough and, uh, yeah, now it's time I, I overcommitted. Now I undercommitted. Right. So it's time for Jen to just keep keep that ball rolling. Right. You know? And uh, so I'm, I'm working on that. But a win for me has been getting out of bed and getting my butt to work and, uh, and doing that. Right. That's pretty good. Yep. Uh, mine was probably that even with this getting me down and stuff, I still – I really did try to – um, uh, kind of figure out, like I, I immediately went into what's next mode rather mm-hmm. than woe is me mode. Like, don't get me wrong. I had plenty of that too, but I didn't let it completely consume me. You know, I, I, I still was trying to, I mean, you know, trying to figure out what my next step will be. So. Yep. You didn't see it as an end. You saw it as a word block. Yeah. Like I said, I saw it as, you know, a, a good, a good punch in the stomach, but, but not enough to, you know, uh, keep me down, I guess. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> That's awesome. That's a huge yeah. step for you. Yeah. So I guess uh, with that, uh, as always, I'll remind everybody that we are not doctors, trained therapists, licensed any things. Um, if you do need actual help, please seek it. Go to your doctor. Go to a therapist. If you're a person with low income, most states have some sort of mental health programs. Um, so, you know, and again, we, we all have the most powerful knowledge tool ever at our fingertips pretty much all the time. So you can find ways to, to, you know, get help there. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're in a a dire kind of a situation or you're feeling really dark, uh, please call the suicide hotline number. Don't do anything drastic because you're, you know, it's just, it's just not the way out. It's just not the right answer. Mm-mm. There's always choices, people. Yep. You may not feel like they're good choices. You may not like the choices. Yeah. But you always have a choice. And opting out is the worst choice you could ever make. Yep. So, as long as you take that one off the table, every other choice is golden. <laughs> you know, every other choice is right. You just got not that one. <laughs> well, that being said, have a wonderful week, everybody. And, uh, you know, let me cheer you on and uh, and cheer us on. So we'd love to hear from you. So we will catch you next week. Welcome to the Wicked Radio Network. Susan, open the door. Oh, my God. What happens now? He's going to break down the door and she's going to hide. I'm breaking down the door. Don't you hide! Oh God, what now? He's gonna find her hiding in the bathroom. I know you're in the bathroom. Ah! I just wanna talk, honey. He's lying. He has a knife behind his back. 
Oh, yeah? Why do you have a knife behind your back? How did you know? That loud knot in the audio said so. <laughs> Well, it's not what you think. He's gonna tell her it's to cut the cable because she wants to be on the Tangent Bound Live Show. November 15, 6 p.m. It's gonna be awesome. You'll want to have your own free podcast on the network. Now they'll make up and do the nasty. Oh, honey, just make up and do the nasty. Wow, what happens now? Now we're getting out of the theater and everybody else will beat the shit out of us in the parking lot. TangentBoundNetwork.com <laughs>